So this morning when I came to school, I kept having this like niggly feeling in my throat. It wasn't painful or anything, but just to be safe, I decided to go and do the red test. And guess what? I got two lines, man. That means I actually get to stay at home for the next seven days. I just hope that my symptoms aren't going to be too bad. I'm gonna drive home, take some Panadol and have a nice nap. Today is day five of quarantine and fortunately I'm feeling actually a whole lot better. Although the first day when I had the two lines on my red test, I was feeling pretty miserable that day. So from almost having no symptoms that morning, I went to having like severe headaches and high fever and sore throat pretty fast that day. But everyone was telling me, oh, it'll only last about two to three days and it'll be okay. And true enough, after about three and a half days, I started feeling a lot better. And now I feel almost perfectly okay. But still, it was not a pleasant experience. So if you haven't had COVID yet, I'm trying not to catch it. If you stay in New Zealand, one medication that helped actually quite a lot with me was this one. This one actually helped a lot more than Panadol Extra or Panadol Rapid. So I still have about two more days to go until my quarantine ends. So I thought I'd use this time to give you an update on how I've been doing for the last four weeks and why I've not been able to upload any videos recently. So I think the biggest thing that's happened to me was that we finally started flying and <laughs> my first one to be honest with you it didn't really go the way that I thought it was gonna go you know for me I thought I was going to be like a natural flyer and be you know quite good to be honest you know after all I quit my job in Singapore and I had this whole career switch and flew all the way to New Zealand so I thought I was like destined to be a pilot and and I thought I was gonna be quite good at it <laughs> but the truth was it was actually the exact opposite and in fact I discovered that I'm actually quite scared of heights. <laughs> um, so when I went on my first flying lesson, um, and the instructor did most of the stuff by the way, but when we took off and he told me to hold the control column, I was so shocked and scared by I think what's called the stick force because you know when you fly these little planes, it's not like car where this where the steering wheel is like very still. The parts of the airplane that controls the movement, it's actually controlled to the steering column through just cable and wires so when you're flying you feel all sorts of force on the control column I felt like if I kind of let go or, or made a small wrong move plane would just kind of roll over and fall out of the sky and also like when we're flying and when we turn because with these little planes, we're not flying like tens of thousands of feet up, right? Maybe 1,000, 2,000 feet from the ground. So you can see everything on the ground quite well. So when you're turning and you look this way, you know, you see even all the little chicken and dogs running around on the farm below, you know? And if I feel like if I turn a bit more, the whole thing is gonna roll and fall down. And I just couldn't get over that fear after the first flight. I am up to about seven or eighth flight now, and I'm doing much better than when I first did it, but I still have this like nervous feeling. And in fact, every time we come back and land, I, I notice that um, I always have this like severe neck and shoulder pain. And I realize it's because I'm holding onto the control column so hard like this, because I'm so nervous, you know? <sighs> yeah. You don't need to feel scared, and I think that's your major issue at the moment. You got the death grip yeah. holding on, and you're scared. Whereas you don't need to be scared. Everything's fine. Alpha rolling you know? zero three, remaining in the circuit. Just need to relax. It's just like driving a car. I also had all my stuff from Singapore finally arrive in New Zealand. I shipped them off in June last year. Ten months. <laughs> you know, it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Um, partly my fault because I chose the cheapest option where I had to wait for the container from Singapore to New Zealand to get full. But what I didn't know was that it was never meant to be a direct container shipped from Singapore to New Zealand. It went all the way from Singapore to Sydney. And from there, it sat in the warehouse for a while and they sent it to Brisbane and it sat in the warehouse again and then came to New Zealand. Fortunately, everything came here in one piece. Um, I had some small things damaged here and there, but most of it was okay including my cup, my Singapore cup. So this is actually from uh, my patient in Singapore. So thank you, Miss Koo. Quite nice. So I've been trying to unpack a lot of the stuff. And as I'm unpacking, what I've realized is that um, if you use those moving companies that come and pack for you, I think you really need to um, be capable about everything they do because for me on that day, I just kind of let them do their thing. They packed everything very carefully, which is nice. But in a way, it wasn't so compact, so it took a lot of volume. And with these uh, container ships, you pay everything by volume. I'm packing my stuff and saw this huge box. And within it, maybe it had like three mugs and few plates, but everything was 
was wrapped up, bubble wrap, paper wrap, triple, quadruple times. Everything was intact. But, you know, was it really necessary? So that has been my life for the last four weeks. So one more thing today, my mom has COVID as well. So because of that, um, we received this like community support package. So I wanted to show you some of the, the free food you can get if you have uh, COVID in New Zealand. So let me show you. It's actually quite a big box. So first of all, we get this uh, huge tub of margarine that my mom opened already. We also got some oatmeal, some tortilla wrap. Also, we have Sausage. I have some cooking oil and minced meat. It's not halal, by the way. And milk powder. What is this? <laughs> and you get some tea as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, everything is very animal style. Uh. We got some pasta, rice, and actually vegetables and fruits. So we get pear, onions, and the rest is actually a lot of it is um is canned food like let me show you <sighs> see cream corn i don't know how to use that um chopped tomatoes i think we, we can make pasta with that some peas yeah i guess we can put that in the pasta so this one i can use in making kimchi soup you know kimchi jjigae you can put that in kimchi jjigae it's quite nice and oh they have half peaches so that's good and uh, what else uh, oh, baked beans quite nice this one you can put in the army stew it's quite good to get all these things especially because it's free <laughs> but we'll make sure these are not wasted and yeah we'll definitely eat the rice and, and all the things here and one more thing before we finish today so the glasses that I'm wearing today it's a local brand called uh, Bolone made in Singapore I think um, they actually sponsored me this one before I left Singapore and they asked me to wear this in one of the videos and make mention of it naturally <laughs> but I never found the opportunity to do this so here you go Bolone I'm sorry this is very late but it's actually a very nice specs i think it looks quite good on me also so thank you i will enjoy wearing this in new zealand <laughs> so i hope you guys are doing all great for those of you who are staying in singapore um enjoy your new freedom you guys can visit jb and all these other places so um yeah have fun but stay also safe and take care and i'll see you in my next video bye bye mm -hmm.